So this element of comparison is very much a very modern thing. And he's doing it like that, she's doing like that, and now why are you doing that? And we don't realize all this that we are listening with our brains and not with our heart, giving chances to new feel and new kinds of emotions. This video will be the first part in which we talk on the famous G minor sonata of Haydn, the first part of that. And we'll be talking mainly on two aspects, that notation and effect. That's coming up right after this. So hello there and welcome to a new episode of Afterthoughts. My name is Wim Winters and today I'm going to talk a little bit on the Haydn Sonatas part one because I feel we need a second part of the Afterthoughts will be released tomorrow or the day after will be linked in this video in case you watch this later. And we will talk, we'll be focusing now on the first part of that G minor sonata. And as with Haydn and all music, I'm fond of notation and affect. It's combined, it's stitched together, so to say. So let's dive into that. I can imagine that you felt a little bit surprised, as you might have been with the Waldstein Sonata and my, some other works that I play of that period, that my tempo choice is somewhat, or some, not, all, not always somewhat, sometimes it's much slower than what we used to hear. And I want to explain you why. Um, in the notation questions, or regarding notation in general, it's very important. And again, I cannot point directly to one source, but we will cover it while doing CPE Bach. Later we will do Turk, we will go to uh, Leopold Mozart, and other sources, and we will come to that. Notation is very important in a sense that it reflects the tempo choice. We've talked in the previous section, um, Afterthoughts, on Pachelbel, uh, last time, on the so-called um, uh, tempo guidance spot, so to say. That's not very much present here, it's very much in the second part of this sonata. So if you want to know more on that, just wait for that video to be released or click on the description or the link. But here, it's the notation is to me, it's 4-4, four, four, normal C, C bar, not with the structure, so normal 4-4 four, four tempo ordinario structure. Leopold Mozart writes on that bar about that and others as well. So a normal 4-4 four, four bar means that you have four beats in a bar. You know, that sounds very obvious, but four quarter notes needs to be filled as four quarter notes. And I've talked about that in the Waldstein, and some people reacted, and it's typically today, and it's something I would very much like to change, that if a musician like I or somebody else who reflects on the music he or she plays and decides that it is somewhat it might have a somewhat other solution than it's generally accepted today, that fingers are pointed and say, where do you find that? And that's not true, and it's not a fact, because, because, because. I can understand that, because music is emotion, and if you are attached to a certain performance, which is related always to a certain movement and a certain tempo, I can understand that if I or somebody else would play it differently. And then even saying, well, it might be an historical based performance. You know that I put myself very much in a kind of relativity box. I was not there when Haydn played it and composed it. Only thing we can do is read sources, which is the interesting part. Nobody actually knows, but that fingers are pointed. And that if you want to differ somewhat in performance, that suddenly you have to explain and you have to prove that you are right because people think you're wrong. I personally believe that in respect to old music, and this is very old music, Haydn, more than two centuries ago, imagine that Haydn would walk through your door now as we speak. What would you do? Would you just shake hands or say, hi, Joseph, or should... Just to say that even 
Simple things like this are common today. When we would meet, we would shake hands and say, hello, nice to meet you, finally. But how did, was that in that time? And here we are playing music. We're playing from their scores, from their notation form, in which they embedded so much knowledge that they, they took for granted. So it's not simple. And I'm not saying I have the truth here. I'm just explaining to you how I feel it. And I think, I believe, reading sources now very, very much in depth. Thanks to you, because um, certainly with CPA Bach, we're going to do that, and later on many more sources, that it's not, it might be possible that what I'm saying to you might be a reflection even of, of what is written in the sources. But again, it's so complicated. But let's open that platform of research and and experiment of let's keep it open. I have the feeling that it's closing. Anyway, why do I play it in that tempo I did? It's more an eight note structured tempo. And that's a little bit contradictory, contradictionary to what I said that we have a normal four four bar structure. But I have to add to that something else. We have a normal four four bar structure and Haydn is using the tempo ordinario. But in that bar structure, he adds a more dense harmony structure, like for instance, in a measure four. Sorry, that's nice. So you have four harmonies, actually five, with an own signification. That's much more dense than, for instance, in the Beethoven. So there we have yum pum 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 pa dum pum pum. We go over the quarter note because nothing's happening really. It's within the quarter note, it's nothing happening. But here you have several places like this where you have a, a very dense harmony also in monodic, monodic um, um, passage. Yeah. You have this Zeus figure which is really in eight notes. And then you have the 32nd notes, which in this part are kind of structural. That's something you have, if you have the normal 4-4 four, four tempo in your bar structure, you can have 32nd notes. And again, ask, don't ask me to point to any sources. We're going through that and it will be a reminder for me as well again. But you, you can read about that in, 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 this, in these sources. There are so many of them. So, but when you have 30 second note, my feel is that it slows down the tempo. And that's actually something that you can find in historical sources. It enhances the articulation. It's not that, it, that, that you have to divide the tempo in two. No, it just slows down a little bit. Like my former late teacher, uh, Jacques Van Oetmessen, would call it a tempo, it's an adagio notation. So instead of having a normal tempo ordinario tempo, which would here, So it's not that I don't want to practice. I even heard the remark on the Waldstein, but that's anyway, that's, it, it, of course, if you play faster, you have to practice more. But I can play it faster. It's a really decision for me. I would play on piano forte exactly in the same tempo, exactly within the margin. So in quarter notes again. Eight note. To me, there is a kind of storytelling that's going on then. Playing faster, I, I constantly have the feel that I have to push. But like here, that's kind, that's kind of tempo spot. If I, as a player, have difficulties of uh, putting that information that comes out the instrument in my head and understanding that you as a listener will never understand it really. So if you as a player play it faster and you really can point every, every note to its right spot in your mind, that's fine. I can't because here is happening so much. And then second point, that's what we're talking about today. It's the effect. Um, the effect of this piece is very, very deep. It's kind of 
um, I don't know in English, it's the feel of sorrow, I feel of, if that's correct, it's pain, it's, it's, it's doubt, it's, it's really deep, deep negative, not negative, but painful emotion, reflective emotion, it's not joyful, it's the opposite of that. And if you play it in that tempo, you really have this, this G minor effect as I feel it. This is hurting then. And again, this metrical feeling. Don't feel the need of going over the bar. That's difficult. I can tell you that's difficult. It doesn't work with me always. It's really something you have to get used to. So if you try this tempo, Give it time, give it weeks even before, be, before you decide it's nothing for you because with a new tempo and certainly if you slow down from what you're used to comes a new basic feel for articulation, for phrasing, for everything. But the wonderful thing is that you have time for that. And then you can wait a little bit more because so much information has been thrown at your ears that should go to your heart to your brain not from your brain to your heart it should go the other way around you should not have to reflect as an audience it should be clear and to me this effect now is clear and i hope it transfers to your heart and soul actually and that's of course the pity of our time, in the sense, and it's a great thing of our time. We have so much information. There are so many recordings we can, with, with one or two mouse clicks of our computers, or even easier, one or two touches on our, our phones, we have them. So this element of comparison is very much a very modern day thing. And he's doing it like that, she's doing it like that, and now why are you doing that? And we don't realize all this that we are listening with our brains and not with our heart, giving chances to new feel and new kinds of emotions. So, with this tempo, I don't have the feeling that I've come ever in problems with the effect. The effect is so important. It's really storytelling. storytelling. And don't think from, you have to feel the rush. No, I just tune the A. It, it's, it's so peace giving if you. Listen now. You can take that time because it's, it's given to you. It's written actually like that. And listen to this trill. You need time for that. that. That's actually a kind of tempo guidance spot and really search for me a better, better name. And then it hurts so much. And then The relief of that release is so much bigger then. And imagine what you have said in one page and there are several others to come. That's difficult, really difficult to keep the effect the same, not to rush, keep within that metrical feel. I've done a long time before I recorded this piece because it was actually a question from someone and I forgot his name, I'm sorry. Didn't write it down and I can't find it back. But at, at least one year before I recorded this piece, and now I have the feeling that it's in my blood, so to say, and I hope 
for this part, the first part of, of this aftertoss, focusing on that first part of the sonata, that you can understand a little bit the reasons why I chose for that tempo. And go ahead, experiment with that. I can tell you once you feel that metrical feel, and I can, I should, we should meet once to demonstrate you that more in depth than I can do in this aftertoss. But once you felt that, there's no way of return because it's so rewarding. It's so freeing your emotion, your soul actually, and it feels so natural, connect, naturally connected to that music. So again, thank you for watching. The, because it will be a second part of this aftertoss on this famous G minor sonata of Haydn. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and we see each other very soon again. Bye.